Hi there, and welcome to Brain Stuff. I'm Josh Clark, and this is the Brain Stuff where I teach you about placebos and their effect. You've surely heard of placebos before. They're those phony drugs that real drugs are tested against. Placebos mean I will please in Latin, and originally it was applied to fake mourners who were hired to attend funerals during medieval times. Well, eventually this term for fake mourners was applied to fake drugs. Eventually, placebos became a permanent fixture of double-blind studies. Those are the kind of studies where the participants are divided into two groups. One group gets the real drug, one group gets the placebo. And if the real drug outperforms the placebo, then the real drug is successful. Hooray! The thing is, though, a lot of researchers noticed that some people who received the placebo still showed a favorable response to it. In fact, further research has revealed that as many as one-third of all people respond favorably to placebos. So let's recap this for a second. Actual sick people receive fake drugs and really get better. That's not supposed to happen. So, studies were launched to find out exactly what was going on. One study in 2004 in Michigan is particularly brutal, but enlightening. It used actual painful injections that were harmless, but again, painful, delivered into people's jaws. Then, the participants were given a saline mm -hmm. injection that they were told was a powerful painkiller. The thing is, saline doesn't have any painkilling properties, which means that the saline injection was a placebo. What's astounding, however, is that every single participant in the study reported a lowering of their pain levels after they were given the saline injection. And even more astoundingly, when viewed through a PET scan, the researchers found that the patient's brains were releasing endorphins, the body's real painkiller. The patients experienced relief of pain, not just in their heads, but in actuality. Prepare for the largest mind blow of all. The nocebo effect. Not only can fake drugs elicit a positive response from people, under the nocebo effect, people can suffer from actual harmful negative side effects from a placebo. So what's going on here? Well, typically researchers' explanations fall in one of two camps. First, the subject expectancy effect. That's where you, the patient, expect a certain outcome to come from, say, the fake drug, and you unconsciously conform your response accordingly. Then, of course, there's good old classical conditioning. But instead of Pavlov's dog salivating at the sound of the bell, patients respond favorably to what they perceive is a real drug, even though it's fake. We have to say, however, that the jury is definitely still out on exactly what's behind the placebo effect. Now, ethically, there's kind of a wrestling match going on. On the one hand, the idea that people can heal just through the power of their bodies rather than having to take powerful drugs that often have negative side effects is, as Martha Stewart would say, a good thing. But on the other hand, being truthful, honest, and transparent with your patients is a central tenet of modern medicine. So what is a physician to do? Well, some clever doctors have come up with a loophole. They can give a placebo as a cure to a patient, but they have to say they're not sure how it works. All that's missing is the wink and the nudge. So where do you fall on the ethics of placebo? Let us know in the comments below and make suggestions for future Brain Stuff episodes. And heck, go ahead and subscribe while you're down there. And if you're feeling frisky, go ahead to brainstuffshow.com.